All right. You know, David DiVaroli of the incredible flick point control is is one I would be expect to be able to pick apart Cook's extended on guard simply because he can get his point to the wrist uh, from so many weird directions before Cook can react to it. And safely, too. These are the friendships you strive for. Me, too. I love my friends. They're the best. Oh, yes. Fast parries from Di Viroli, faster than I think possibly other people. Venue so loud, can't hear it. See, that was a that was a really important early touch for Divaroli, because um, it gives him a lot more space to work with. They got now two touches to work with before Cook can sit back and relax. And now Cook is pushing on him, which is probably well out of Cook's comfort zone. Oh, yes. I saw that one from a mile away. Diveroli caught him in four, missed the four, but still managed to hold on to the blade. And then spins around for the preem. There it is, and four misses the four, holds on to the blade, gets a chop down his arm. And now it's two, and, you know, it's very early, and we've seen Cook come back before and make adjustments, but this is, uh, he's got to be way more patient and not, not push a Diveroli like that because it's just not his game. It's not the game we've seen. Very close fencing. Very, very close. It's a, probably to the Italians good. Cook wants to keep the distance away. Oof. We're muting. I forgot to mute. Third one for Di Viroli. Three minutes in. One minute in, three touches. Six flick. Yeah. That flick in four is like the most modern touch. Di Viroli does it. Uh, Jonathan Cohen from Israel does it. Bia does it from France. Just that's your, your, like your extinctive counter. And you can get it from so much closer than you think. It's... Um, Really good all-purpose touch. Plus, like your your opponent's whole torso is so it's hard to miss. You got you know you got like a, a straight line down the arm all the way into the torso. Cook gets one that there with a the flesh, but he's you know maybe that'll be him calming down now. Let's see. And remember the ice cream? That was good. Get more of that. I've got Cook um, a little bit cal calmer. Starting to find the the times when sticking his arm out draws a reaction from Di Viroli. And then and dealing with it after that. Uh, Di Viroli, um, not going to bite though. He's a very patient fencer. Oh, good touch from Cook. He really does not quite far enough back. Kind of lured, lulled him into. False sense of security. End of the first. Three, two, but like a dominant three, two. Um, Although Cook's making the adjustment that he needs to by keeping Di Viroli farther away. See, Leland on the Discord is saying that uh, a closer distance favors Di Viroli, and I agree with that. So it's good to see Cook making this adjustment. One, two, miss one, then the, the miss two, and then, the, and then here is the preem. Oh my 
God, I've been streaming for almost five hours already. It's another full day's work. I am probably not streaming tomorrow. I'm so tired. Glad I got this one in though. This has been a fun one. Xander, thanks for your thanks for your comments. They've been they've been real helpful. Appreciate them. The pushing again, but now De Broly's just almost started in that distance. Came in off the on guard line to get close enough to be able to defense at a close distance without having to deal with cock with Cook's threats. And there it is. Um you've really close enough close and the cook wants to be so cook is trying for the counter but because the distance is so close you've really scores and uh cook can't get the duck in in time it's fast I think they've backed off on it a little bit, but back when Marco Fischero was fencing, the Italians were like tip over Belgard close all the time. I was just there on guard, and this is so Divarola is very comfortable at this distance. And Cook just, you know, he's when referee fenced so closely, he would stick his arm out. Oh, good look, good touch from him to, to use his Belgard to keep Divarola away. Yeah. Uh, if you remember when he fenced so closely, so closely, we try to find the blade, and and Cook would just disengage everything, and I would see Divarola making clean blade contact consistently, and I just don't think uh, Cook is prepared to really deal with that. Oh, except Divarola goes fast. Cook ready with the counter, and now we've equalized. Oh, and uh, wow, that's three in a row that Cook's got with that, that, that long lunge. He's got a, um, and now he's got the lead. And so DiVarola's early advantage has, has gone completely. And now he's got a push on Cook. Uh, although I'm not sure Cook will change what's working. DiVarola's got to be, um, he's got to look for the parries a lot more, I think. And Cook's coming in. Find the blade and then wait for your opportunity. Or just let him miss. That works too. Duck it. I'm not sure the duck mattered. Maybe it was off to the left. Cook pressing. Not cook pressing. Divaroli pressing the blade. Wow. <laughs> Cook knows he didn't deserve that one. He was like, thank you, God. Just just barely far enough to reach the mask. Lucky touch, but sometimes when you're when you're close to the match, a bit of luck is all you need. You've really getting close, but now he's scared to get too close because that's when Cook is um is so dangerous. I think Cook has just lulled him into a false sense of security again. Like we're seeing a lot fewer distance changes from Divarola, just because Cook is so so static. There's that four again. Divarola finding managing to not get too close and keeping Cook press on the back line. Yeah, see, flicking four. That's how the new. That's how the cool kids do it nowadays. I think Bia does it. As I say that, it's a little bit weird to think a French gripper does it, but um, I really feel like I've seen him do it. Ten seconds left. Nothing's gonna happen. Wow, 
We got ourselves about here, 6-6. Six, six. Good adjustment by Cook to um to get the fleshes in when um when Diveroli was close. And then that last touch, the sixth touch by, by Diveroli is his adjustment that he just made that he's got the whole third period to work with, where he is um this consistent with the blade contact. Blade contact going forward and then release, but release going backwards. Um, it's impossible to say. It's really annoying, surprisingly annoying with his G plays that they don't have the lights in the mask. I wonder if the system wasn't working or they don't have the cash for it anymore. Uh, but it's um, yeah, that's what that's what Diva has got to do is that press release and then release both blade pressure and uh and footwork and open the distance so that when uh if quick tries to flush again deep roll is already going backwards for it off the release it's when he releases i think and cook is and he's staying there that he gets hit as he switched off blade pressure entirely or Cook's just, wow. Okay, shout outs to Cook for, for acknowledging that touch. That is sportsmanship, that is phenomenal. That was immediate. We know we've had uh, grounding issues before on this trip. Um, so yeah. But now he's just very far out and he's still managing now to, to slide around the blade pressure from Diva Roli, where Cook is Cook is able to slide around the blade pressure. But it looks like um Diva Roli has found his way in far enough that Cook isn't isn't comfortable doing a full extension anymore, which is probably important. He's getting into more of a Heinzery on guard, which like way out like this. Uh Diva Roli going in with those fast flicks we talked about way back at the beginning to see if he can get something. But we're expecting a flesh and cook any second now as he really gets closer and closer and cook is closer and closer to the back line. But I think he really knows what's coming here and that's why he's been releasing pressure so much. Ah, uh, non combativity. Love to see the sportsmanship. Absolutely. Pressure and, you know, so now he's finding the blade with that, that press. Um, but uh, it remains to be seen what he does with it. I think it's just a, like a false, false pressure to, to release him pulling Cook. And a halt for... Passivity. I thought the last salt was for passivity. Maybe she missed the timing? I don't know. I would be very, like, so Diva Roll is number two in the world, which means he came in with a higher seating. Um, I guess we can't get to, to black, P Black, but if we did, he would win. Cook again, uh, just with that extension, get, letting Diveroli get very close because he knows if he's too far away, especially with Cook already on, with Diveroli already on the blade, he's going to get parried. Oh, but this one, this one, Diver Cook says he got. I that's too close to call. I honestly could not see it. It might have hit the edge of the foot, it might have not. I don't think this video is going to be any better. Oh, okay. So that one does look like it hit. That one looks like it nicked the edge of the shoe. Maybe. 
I wonder if the grounded ship slight reset the shot clock. Maybe, but they went, she called it sooner, not, not later. And like you, you posted the rules in the discord, a floor hit's supposed to reset, reset the shot clock anyway. Yeah, I think that was, I think that's, that's good enough to call a touch. Especially when you see Dave really chuck the floor and it's not grounding. And it's grounding. Now De Viroli is on a mission. Which is great for Cook, because that's what that's where Cook feasts is when people come at him and come at him and come at him and he can um I just he's just he's doing it. He's long the VD into a sense of security and did, like he's gonna go poke and then nothing happens and poke and nothing happens and poke and oh no there's a flesh yep eight six i am fucking around with my light there we go good enough Got five minutes left you've really just not even I don't know. I'm not sure what he's looking for anymore, but he's not getting it. And now it's at uh, nine, six and 40 seconds left and he hasn't gotten anything. I think he, I, he might be so tired. He doesn't have anything. This is what, um, this is kind of what, uh, I paid 2.5 talks about is your Olympic touches when it really matters. So Diva really is just, just tired and tense and really needs to score. So all he's got is what he has. Oh, but that was phenomenal. David pressing, pressing, pressing. So this is the Olympic touches when it's, you know, whatever David the role is best action is, that's what he's going to be using now. And it's like, it's going to be a very good action, but it's not really set up to deal with, uh, uh, Cook's game, as you can see right there, as that lead that lead that Diveroli had at the beginning was so precious. Uh, although that's another way to do it is he gets Cook off balance and he can never never set up. Card for false start. I guess not. Card for false start. Now you got to do it. Yeah, card for false start. This is the most most cook has moved ever. Uh, the fastest he's moved ever. Um, so good on him for for keeping up with Ivaroli the there. Turning the back, turning the back. Oh, they're giving it to him. Interesting. <laughs> the video going back taking that taking the FA with him. Oh man. You know, if anybody could make this comeback, it would be Davide Di Veroli and those Italians, but um five seconds and three point one four seconds and uh two touches. I don't think he's making it. Yeah, that's it. About over. It is insanely cool to see both of these guys in the finals, and I'm really happy that the sport is so strong in the future. Not just a bunch of old guys. And he gets one more with a half second left. Amazing.
and time. Congratulations to Matthew Thomas Cook on winning gold at the bright old age of 23. Congratulations to you, sir. You fenced phenomenally. Taking out just an absolute murderer's row of, of Seclosi, Divaroli, um, Cuomo, I think. And we get the congratulations throw, all the men and the women come in.